Are you wondering how to annotate a book or chunk of text for your English class? Maybe your task is to write an essay based on your annotations, or you're just trying to find a close reading strategy for an assigned book. I'm Miss Peer Editor, and today you're going to annotate a literary passage with me. We're going to read a passage from The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. You don't need to know about the book's plot or anything, all you need to know is that this passage describes a place called the Valley of Ashes. Please pause this video and take a minute to just read the passage on your own. So now that you've read it, let's begin! I like to start by pinpointing specific literary devices. Right off the bat, I can see two examples of alliteration, Fantastic Farm, and the phrase Grotesque Gardens. This is really important because it creates a rhythm and draws the reader's attention to the sentence. The author is practically screaming, look at the sentence more closely. So another device is a simile, which compares the ashes to wheat that grows in ridges and gardens. This is kind of odd because the narrator is comparing ashes, which are a sign of decay, to wheat, which is a sign of growth. It's safe to say that this simile juxtaposes, or contrasts, those two ideas. I always like to find out the meaning of words I don't know. If I have a dictionary, well actually if I have my phone because I don't feel like looking through an actual dictionary, but if I have my phone, I'll look it up, but otherwise I'll use context clues. This word, transcendent, looks tricky, but I know that to transcend is to surpass or rise above. So transcendent probably means something that goes above and beyond, something extraordinary. According to Google, it means beyond or above the range of normal or merely physical human experience. So we were right. The ashes seem kind of extraordinary or exceptional, which hints to us that they represent a larger idea. We see a lot of repetition with the color gray. The cars are gray, showing that modern technology is slowed down here. This valley of ashes seems isolated, almost stuck in a certain time, very stagnant. And words such as ghastly, leaden, impenetrable, and obscure create a grim, bleak, or somber tone. This is the next part. Please pause again to read it. Okay, so this is where the passage starts to get interesting. We see that Dr. T.J. Eckelberg's eyes, which are displayed on a billboard, are blue which is a contrast to the previous emphasis on gray. These eyes, along with large spectacles, are an important symbol that represent an all-seeing or omnipotent being, such as God. Just like God, these eyes are watching over this entire scene, but we can't see the rest of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg's face, just like the way that we can't really see what God looks like. Here's another word I don't know. Oculist, which means eye doctor. The narrator says that this oculus sank down into eternal blindness, which is ironic considering the fact that he's an eye specialist. Another striking image is the description of paintless days, which makes the Valley of Ashes seem colorless, creating a sense of hopelessness and disillusionment. And there we have it, a major theme. This book takes place in the 1920s, right after World War I, and this passage really captures the essence of the moral decay that was happening at the time. After seeing so much destruction, writers such as F. Scott Fitzgerald, who were called the Lost Generation, wrote about their own disillusionment with the world. This valley of ashes is a place devoid of hope. This is a place where even eye doctors become blind, and a divine being sees all of this decay, but won't do anything to stop it. So why do we annotate in the first place? We're trying to find out the author's purpose, or the reason why the author wrote this at all. Why did he decide to include this specific passage in his piece of writing? Think of the author as a director making a movie. Just as a director decides which scenes to cut, authors have to edit and remove some passages. Why did this piece of text make the cut? To figure that out, we have to annotate and determine what the passage reveals about character, setting, and plot. Once we know this, we can finally discover the theme, which is our end goal. As always, please subscribe, tap the bell to receive notifications whenever I make a new video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, comment with other reading passages you would like me to annotate, and I will do it in an upcoming video. 
I will see you next time.